Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the 9th of August 2017. Obviously, the top story here is Tropical Storm Franklin, soon to be Hurricane Franklin, more than likely, uh, as of the 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time advisory package. Winds are at 70 miles per hour. It's moving west at 13, and the air pressure was down to 985 millibars, and I suspect that that is continuing to drop. This is going to make landfall later this evening into tonight along the Mexican coastline, obviously within the hurricane warning area. In a moment, we will zoom in uh, using a special tracking map that we have access to, and I'll show you some of the geographic areas that will be impacted. Looking at the wide perspective of the Atlantic Basin, here is Franklin, and we will zoom in on that in just a moment. There's an interesting swirl and energy trying to come in through the Bahamas. Probably not much to come of it in terms of tropical development, but some shower and thunderstorm activity nevertheless. And a little piece of tropical wave energy uh, may be associated with this elongated trough of low pressure uh, moving into the southern Windward Islands. So Trinidad, Tobago, and vicinity may be getting some rain showers and some squally weather from time to time. So just be aware of that. And then this, of course, is the conglomerated mess that's associated with 99L, and I will address that as well later on as I go through this update. So the visible satellite floater image over Franklin clearly shows a developing central dense overcast, and that basically means you're getting this ball of convection surrounded by the feeder bands, and it is more and more looking like your classic tropical storm, almost hurricane. It won't be long, probably the next several hours, six hours or so, that we should start to be able to, to discern an eye. There are several aircraft, both manned and unmanned, the NASA Global Hawk flying through here, uh, and then lots of activity with the hurricane hunters. So there's plenty of data being collected, research being done, and what we call in situ, you know, on-site reconnaissance to gather information on what's happening with Franklin as it moves off to the west here, eventually making landfall later tonight. So this is the visible imagery and that helps a lot, but boy, when you look at the infrared and this shows us the colors of the cloud tops and these reds and these grays that are showing up, and let me switch my color over here to blue, that'll help. Uh, these reds and grays in here are very indicative of cold cloud tops, meaning that they are reaching very high into the atmosphere. So this is that upward motion that we talk about, uh, convection, and that's all around the core. And so that is helping to lower the pressure, and then the winds will catch up. There is a definitive dry slot that is trying to work its way into the core, but then look right over here, just on the last couple of frames, it looks like it gets choked off uh, as convection on that northwest side of this developing CDO begins to ramp up and work that dry air out seemingly very quickly. It's a real shame that we don't have any reliable radar down in this region that I'm aware of. Uh, we would have seen it uh, because of uh, Brian McNulty at the University of Miami. Uh, he tracks those radars and puts together these long animations and they're just not available. Ah, too bad. But uh, nevertheless, we'll see what happens. I do know as well that Josh Morgerman from iCyclone, he left Japan where he was for Nauru, and now he is in Mexico and he is en route uh, to the coast over here to intercept Franklin later tonight. So we'll see what kind of information he's able to get. He will have his barometers with him, and so that should be helpful uh, if he's able to get into the eye. He's going to He's going to be up against it because it's going to be nightfall, nighttime for the landfall, and there's no radar down there that I'm aware of. So unless it has a very clear eye, it could be challenging for him. All right, so looking at this map, this is the Storm Pulse map. Uh, this comes from our, um, our Hurricane Track Insider site, our subscriber site. And so this is really neat because you can zoom in. You can see, obviously, the outline of the different watches and warnings and the statistics on Franklin. But what I really like is the ability to be able to zoom in and look at some of the geographic areas that could be impacted. Now we know that the advice is always 
you know, do not go uh, looking at the skinny black line, so to speak. And in this case, this uh, sort of a yellowish line, and this is the center path of the forecast. All right, so let's just look along that area and to the north, and you see overall fairly sparsely populated uh, land down through this region. You have Rancho Nuevo, and then you have Emilio Carranza over here. I think that's how you say it, hopefully. And then really not a lot right along the coast itself. Obviously, this you know is highly dependent on exactly where the center uh, makes landfall. Uh, you move north just a little bit, and I can zoom in even closer. Uh, really, really neat to be able to do this. And you know, you see that there are some cities and towns along the coast here, but overall, generally not a heavily populated area. You notice another thing: uh, lots of farmland through here. So you bet it's already starting to get drenched now. Um, and really, the other thing is I'm noticing this uh, in terms of the road networks down here for for Josh. Um, you know, you got this right here coming out of Emilio Carranza. I think that's how you say it. Uh, so that's close enough to the coast, but certainly nothing right along the beachfront itself, which is probably a good thing. But what we're going to do, we'll be able to, to look at this as the uh, system gets closer. Uh, starting at 4 o'clock Eastern Time today, I'm going to just go live on YouTube, and uh, we're going to cover this until landfall. Um, and I'll pretty much just be sitting here going over everything constantly. You know, I'll take a few breaks every once in a while to you know, grab a bite to eat or something, but it's pretty much going to be wall-to-wall, now-cast coverage of what's happening with Franklin, and we'll be able to look at this map and see as it gets closer, because eventually, of course, the uh, center of the storm will be closing in on the coast, and we'll be able to track that in almost real time, especially with satellite, and we'll use this tool here a lot. Uh, no, I spent a lot of time on that, but it's a neat feature, and we're going to use it a lot as I go live later today. Plenty of upper ocean heat content for this to take advantage of in the Bay of Campeche, so uh, strengthening is likely... My guess uh, a couple of days ago, and it still is, is that Franklin peaks at 90 miles per hour. And, you know, if you spot me plus or minus 5 miles per hour, uh, I think it's going to be pretty safe to say that it'll do so. And it wouldn't surprise me if it gets to 100, but I'm sticking with 90 miles per hour as my prediction for the landfall operational uh, wind once, once the recon and Everybody verifies that down there. My guess is 90 miles per hour when it makes landfall. And a lot of that is this upper ocean heat content and the very favorable upper level winds that we can see here. Uh, all green throughout the area. Um, very low shear coming out of the north. Uh, but it's very, very low. So not much in the way of impediments for this to continue to strengthen, unfortunately, for the folks here in Mexico. Now, Regarding 99L out here, there's been a lot of talk about that, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to address this. Uh, I noticed today that the NOAA update to the hurricane season forecast was released. I guess I forgot this was coming. And uh, they're calling for quite a busy season and 60% um, chance that it's an above-normal season. We're already up to six named storms. Franklin's almost certainly going to be the first hurricane. And coincidentally, the average first hurricane occurs August 10th. So we're going to be right in the wheelhouse for that. Uh, we're at six named storms. We're going to probably have one hurricane so far. And NOAA is suggesting anywhere from 14 to 19 named storms total. You know, they do these ranges. Anywhere from five to nine hurricanes and two to five majors. This right here, you know... That's alarming, and it's not just the United States that we're talking about here. You know, five major hurricanes, uh, the possibility that that could happen, um, that should definitely get people's attention. Those are your Cat 3, 4, 5 hurricanes, uh, the major hurricanes, intense hurricanes. Uh, two is enough. Five is getting to be, like I said, alarming. You think about the other areas of the Atlantic Basin, not just the United States, but uh, that's a lot of potential damage that could be occurring 
if these were to interact with land. Obviously, that is the big key. Uh, and there's really not much to glean from this in terms of any potential steering patterns. You know, they do talk about in this paragraph, um, you know, what we've had so far in the season and the impacts that we have had so far. They've been relatively minimal on a large scale for the areas that they impacted. Certainly, they had an, you know, a major impact, right? If your house was flooded or a tornado affected you or a tree fell down in your yard, then yeah, it's been a rough season for you already. Um, but it could get worse from here, and that's what this is telling us. So, you know, uh, this is no surprise. We've been talking about the potential of this for quite some time with the very warm sea surface temperatures, no El Nino, and the early season activity in the main development region. All right, so if you haven't done something to get ready and you've just been blowing it off and saying, yeah, nothing's going to happen, maybe this will be the final, you know, sort of doctor's recommendation, if you will. And, hey, this does come from Dr. Jerry Bell, Ph.D., Right, So the doctor says, get ready for hurricane season. So let's go back and look at 99L. There's been a lot of speculation and talk with this as well. It's located over here, and we can go over to the satellite imagery, the wide shot. I'll show you what that looks like. So here it is. You know, This is an upper-level low-pressure area, and here's the vorticity signature. Uh, the vort <laughs> Well, it's there. But this is the satellite imagery showing where the Vort center is, the center of what little circulation there is there. All right, So we do have something there, but there's some strong upper-level winds, and we can see that. Whoops, didn't mean to draw an arrow. We can see, <laughs> come on. Uh, we can see that right here in the upper-level winds. I want to use my blue right over the top of it, so not very favorable. But some ridging looks like it's going to try to develop with more greens. And this might have a chance to develop. You know, the Euro was pretty aggressive with it, and we talked about that in the past couple of days. And this is last night's analysis. This is the Zero Z run. Uh, of course, this comes from tropicaltidbits.com. And what we see here, there's Franklin, of course, and we've addressed this. Probably going to be a hurricane in New Mexico. But here's the vorticity energy associated with 99L at the initial conditions last night. This is 24 hours out, so this would be around 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. All right, so this is then so Wednesday night, and then finally Thursday night, and then Friday night it starts to develop some, and then Saturday night, pretty potent looking, maybe a tropical storm, and then Sunday, um, actually I only go out to five days, sorry. Kind of gave away the ending there. So this continues to go on, and it turns out to see. Why would it do that? Well, first of all, let's just assume for the sake of argument, that this does develop. The GFS, the Global Forecast System, does nothing with this. And so the European may be overdoing it. The models have really had a bad year. We've already talked about Nauru with the Euro and the GFS and indicating extreme uh, strengthening before it hit Japan, and they were off by, in some cases, 40 millibars, whatever. They blew it uh, for the intensity forecast. So this may not even exist. But assuming that it does, why wouldn't it be a threat to the United States? And I'm pretty confident that it wouldn't be. Well, that's fairly easy to understand. We can look at the heights of the atmosphere, and this gives us an idea. Um, your, your contour lines here, as we call them, these are your isobars. I, you can think of them as contour lines. This is your surface pressure down at the ocean. All right, so you see... The euro showing 1,008 millibars, so nothing very strong, to be sure. And then the colors here, this deep crimson color here, and then this red over here, these are your heights in the middle part of the atmosphere, 500 millibars, yeah, roughly the middle. And so depending on what time of year it is and how the, the pattern is, you know, sometimes you need this much ridging to get a system to hit the U.S., and sometimes you only need this much, this 588 over here. It's, it's technical stuff, but basically this is your wall of air that if, and we're just speculating here, this were to come over and be more westerly like this, then this would be trapped and come on into the southeast. So basically your alleyway for recurvature is right through here. So it's going to go around this big wall of air. 
Uh, think of it as a giant water balloon. I have used this analogy in the past. This is a huge water balloon, and this is a smaller water balloon. This water balloon can expand and contract at will. Uh, this one might be able to do so a little bit, but it's a, you know pretty much confined to this shape. And so it's just going to go around this. Uh, as this changes its shape, it alters what this does. So this time of year, you are looking mainly at the Bermuda High out here for steering. Later on, as we saw like with Matthew, you get some higher pressures that start to develop over the northwest Atlantic, and then your systems can just come in and be steered right into the United States. But that's a story for another day, and it may start changing to that. And as far as the eclipse goes, it better change to that, or a lot of people in the southeast here are going to be extremely upset and disappointed with Mother Nature. Also a story for another day. We'll talk about that later. So that's what's happening. Franklin, the big story, going to be a hurricane almost certainly, and we'll just see how strong it gets. Like I said, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to go live on YouTube, and if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do so so that you will get an alert when I do updates or go live, etc. <clears throat> and we will now cast this soon-to-be hurricane uh, as it heads towards Mexico. And we'll have the chat going, and um, it'll be really, I don't want to say fun, because that's not the idea, but I think it'll be informative, and it's a great way to engage with people as we chat, and we talk about it, and maybe even some people in Mexico, in the path, will be able to come on too, and tell us what's going on with them, assuming they have power. Alright, so 4 o'clock Eastern Time, check it out. Other than that, that's it for me for today. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you live at 4 p.m. Eastern.